in terms uh, via Mochizuki formula in terms of uh, some generating function which I had called Z S A1 A2. So S was our surface. Maybe I should remind you S is a algebraic surface um, with a PG of S bigger than zero and first back number zero. And uh, <coughs> as this was mentioned before, so this number P plus, uh, which is the number of positive eigenvalues on the intersection form, uh, is always uh, two PG of S plus one. So we see if that is bigger than zero, then B plus is bigger than one. Um, <coughs> okay, so we wanted to compute this. So we express this in terms of these, uh, all these numbers in terms of this generating function, which were some integrals over Hilbert schemes, which I will not um, not specify. Of uh, some expression uh, q to the n1 plus n2, and uh, then we had applied uh, a, so, well, by a universality or cobordism argument we had seen that uh, it's enough to compute this in case S is a toric surface and A1, A2 are toric line bundles. And uh, so that means we have that T, so acts on S with finitely many fixed points. And uh, so, which I mean, we need P1 to PE. And uh, we have we had seen that then the action of T lifts to an action uh, on the Hilbert scheme of n points, still with finitely many fixed points. So with uh, fixed points parametrized. Uh, by e tuples of partitions. So we have e partitions and the numbers partitions sum up to n. And then we uh, wanted to apply Bort residue formula. And uh, <coughs> today it was also mentioned in Pavel's talk. A tier bot localization, which I'm anyway, which uh, is more or less the same, but allowing also for the equivalent setting. <coughs> so, for uh, so let me just write it. So, if X assume uh, we have an equivalent vector bundle on X, and we want to compute, uh, say, something like uh, the integral over the churn class, some expression in the churn classes of it, then uh, this would be the sum over the fixed points. So now we don't know this n, where n is the number of fixed points. The uh, p of uh, this equivariant churn classes at p, which were defined in terms of the weight of the action, and then I divide the Euler class, so this would be TPI, so these are not the same i's as here, anyway, <clears throat> and so this is uh, true if we want to, if we just, if, the, if x is compact, um, then we can, like this, just get this number, if we put uh, the epsilon 1, epsilon, so the equivalent weight of the action, so epsilon i equal to zero. Um, 
whether X is compact or not, we can also view this as push forward and equivalent cohomology. Then this would be this expression as an equivalent integral. So this would be in the equivalent cohomology of a point. And if X is not compact, we can also do it. Then we are uh, this uh, this sum will only live in the quotient field of the equivalent cohomology of a point, which would be uh, somehow Q. Uh, fraction uh, field of uh, rational functions in the AI. So we can always make this expression. And uh, now we want to, I want to relate what we have to compute here to the Nekas, to some versions of the Nekasov partition function. So <clears throat> let me just uh, review this. So we look, we consider the following moduli space. So this is of frame chiefs on P2. So say M of N, I just consider rank two case for now. So this is pairs of E, which is a torsion free sheaf on P2 and phi. So E is a rank two torsion free sheaf on P2, um, whose second churn class is N. I think it was also on the blackboard. And uh, if I take phi, uh, is a trivialization of the restriction to the line at infinity to the trivial bundle an isomorphism. Okay, so this is uh, smooth and quasi-compact, uh, quasi-projective, but it's not compact. And this carries uh, an action of uh, a torus. Star, so T equals C star to the three acts on this MN. So first, uh, C star squared acts on P2, fixing the line at infinity. So this gives us, uh, and then we get an action, therefore, so just if we take the co homogeneous coordinates, if we put the homogeneous coordinates x0, x1, x2 on P2, and we have an element T1, T2, and we act on it, then we can just do this by leaving the first coordinate fixed and multiplying the other ones. Okay, and the x star c star acts on this framing. Namely, uh, if we say, if this is the coordinate on C star and we apply it to such a pair of a bundle and a trivialization at infinity, then this is uh, sent to the same bundle, but we change the framing. So for instance, S to the minus one zero zero S composed with phi. So we just rescale uh, the fibers or the, the two directions of this trivial bundle in different ways. <coughs> and so this gives us the torus. And now this action has finitely many fixed points. It turns out that this is just, uh, a fixed point is just given by the fact that this E splits as a direct sum of ideal sheaves of zero-dimensional schemes, and uh, phi is just the identity. So this is, is IZ1 plus IZ2. 
the identity, because uh, <coughs> where uh, ci are uh, elements in the Hilbert scheme, well, I just say of A2, so this is uh, the open part of, of the Hilbert scheme of, uh, so of A2 away from L infinity, which are supported in the origin, um, so of some numbers, and I, uh, where this IZI is a monomial ideal and obviously N1 plus N2 is equal to N because the, the churn class is given by the singularities of the sheaves. And so we see, in other words, we had seen that a monomial ideal is given by partition of uh, this number n i, so that follows that the fixed points of m n are given by pairs of partitions. And now the Nickers of partition function is. Uh, that we want to integrate something over this thing uh, using the formula I just am wiping out. So for instance, the simplest version is the pure theory In this case, we just say that this partition function, actually the instanton part, but I never consider anything else, uh, so epsilon 1, epsilon 2, A, and say Q, uh, would be the sum over all n bigger equal to 0 to the generating function of the following integral. We integrate over this moduli space 1. Q to the n, where this is meant in the sense before, we use localization. Uh, we apply this localization formally, so this will be an element in the field of rational functions in epsilon 1, epsilon 2, A, and then obviously a power series in Q, where we just apply this uh, localization formula from before. So, if, yeah, no, uh, actually, so I should say that uh, A is equal to the logarithm of S, uh, epsilon 1 is equal to the logarithm of T1, and epsilon 2 is equal to the logarithm of T2. We had seen before that to an equivalent variable, we associate something such that addition corresponds to multiplication. So this is what it is. OK, so this is uh, the simplest case. This is uh, so. <clears throat> Uh, so now, a Neckersov conjecture basically, uh, I mean, what I would call the Neckersov conjecture for this case would be, would be, say, an explicit formula for uh, the lowest order terms. of the logarithm of this thing. So the lowest order terms in epsilon 1, epsilon 2 of this. So for instance, for this particular case, uh, there are several proofs but uh, of such a formula. One I know is by Nakajima and Yoshioka. And from this, by somehow some argument, uh, one can deduce the formula for the wall crossing of the Donaldson veins. Uh, in case E plus is equal to 1. So this is related to Osomanskot's talk. 
And uh, <clears throat> one can, however, also look at more complicated things. So one can add some, well, I think, what the physicists call meta. So we can integrate some bundles over it. So for instance, uh, there is a universal sheaf. So there's a universal sheaf. E over P2 times this moduli space. And uh, so therefore we have, so this picture, P2 times the moduli space with the two projections, Q to P2 and P to the moduli space. And we can consider, for instance, this universal sheaf to be uh, so, in the normalization that I've seen, you take the push forward to the modelized space uh, of this universal sheet. So, R1 push forward, so fiberwise the first cohomology, um, tensor Q upper star of E of O of minus L infinity. So, the functions which this is all equivalently, so we look at the uh, Holomorphic functions vanishing at the line at infinity, everything in equivalent cohomology, in equivalent uh, K theory. And um, so this makes sense because um, uh, you know, we push forward along this uh, compact direction. So the fibers are P, it's just P2, so this is fine. And then The uh, Nikasov partition function, say, with fundamental matter, uh, would be, uh, we, I can write it like this. So it depends again on these things, epsilon 1, epsilon 2, A, some number M. Q. And so here we again take the sum, take the integral over M, and now uh, we integrate over the Euler class of this uh, tautological sheaf, and we twist it by some equivalent character, M, which uh, I think is then called the mass or something, uh, Q to the N. And so uh, the Nekasov conjecture for this has been uh, also shown by uh, Nakajima Yoshioka. And then from this, one can, using this, one can prove the Witten conjecture for uh, algebraic surfaces. Um, that uh, the Zabwitten invariants give the same information as the Donaldson invariants. So this um, was also done by Nakajima and Yoshioka, and they allowed me also to participate <coughs> a little bit. So um, then um, we can look at uh, uh, we can look at other cases, namely a joint matter. Um, so this would be, we have some other mass. And uh, this would be we take the Euler class of the tangent bundle of this thing, twisted by some equivalent character. Okay, but uh, <clears throat> so <clears throat> this somehow should uh, is something which seems to be related to the Euler number of the moduli space. So one could have hoped 
uh, that this is what we need in our case, but unfortunately that's not the case. We need both. So we consider both. Um, so it depends on epsilon 1, epsilon 2, A, M, M. And so this will therefore be integral over Mn. So some n of uh, the Euler class of V of n of M times the Euler class of this tangent bundle. twisted by this. Now, <clears throat> this is actually, unfortunately, so, and now indeed, uh, we can show, it's, one, one can show that this thing I wanted to compute so, maybe I just write it in a kind of uh, who is it? So we can show that this thing that we had, this ZS, A1, A2, uh, that we wanted to compute can be expressed in terms of this actually in a very simple way. Um, so if S is a, a projective Tory surface, and uh, we have here the fixed points of the action P1 to PE, uh, then we can... This uh, function we wanted to consider to compute our invariance can be expressed just as a product I, so maybe to E, Z, W. So we take the weight of the action on the uh, local coordinates, and then we also somehow have to suitably assign what locally happens to these. So there's the A. I, I don't write what this precise is. So A, I, M, I. M, I, Q, maybe with some prefactor, and we, again, take the limit uh, where epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are equal to 0. This will give me this. And so one can, so why should that be the case? At least we can see that one is summing over the same thing. So if I take the coefficient of q to the n, so here on this side, we are computing on the sum, on the disjoint union of all Hilbert schemes of n1 points times n2 points, such that n1 plus n2 is equal to n. And for this Hilbert scheme, it's an e-tuple of partitions. So this is a sum over two e-tuples of partitions. And uh, on the other side, um, if we just look at one of these partition functions, the coefficient of q to the n is a sum over uh, pairs of partitions, and we have e-factors, so it's also two e-tuples of partitions. So we sum over the same kind of thing, and uh, then one can check that term by term you have the same thing on both sides. If you just compare with the Mochizuki formula, you can actually see where which one is the, there's uh, this thing with the tautological classes will be the fundamental mapper, matter, the, the P of thing, which is just the, the, the P of E is the uh, is, is the, the joint matter, and uh, what is in the denominator essentially gives us. Uh, <coughs> so, 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 can you remind uh, what you are A1 and A2? Yeah. So, this was. Um, so, we were looking at, um, at Mochizuki's formula. Uh, 
Um, and so the statement was that if one wants to compute um, something, but uh, you know, so if I want to take the integral over this moduli space, of some expression in classes coming from the universal sheaf, then this was equal to the sum over all ways how we can split this C1 as a sum of two classes in the second cohomology. And this I wanted A2. And then we have here uh, the zeibig witten invariant of the first, and then we have some integral over uh, over the we have this we have the sum over all n1 plus n2 equal to c2 minus a1 a2 of um, the integral over something on the Hilbert scheme of points. Um, so that was how how the formula was, and so a1 and a2 are these classes. So in particular, a1 corresponds to the Zabwitten class. What? W so I explained it the other time. So um, it's just, so we have a, the notion of weight. So the X is a, you know, S is a toric surface. So that means at every fixed point, we have coordinates, which are eigenvalues for the action. And the weight uh, with respect to T of these is W of X1 and uh, of, of, at the fixed point is, is the weight of, of the action on the coordinates. Okay, so um, so we find this. I will not go Is into. So for 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 these, the the, the first two it's there, uh, and it has been <laughs> proven. And for for this one, there's uh, there's no statement. So uh, for if you have it with. With both adjoint matter and uh, adjoint matter and fundamental matter, there's no. Uh, it's not even. There's not even a statement what the formula should be, and this is also true because the, in, from the physics point of view, I was told that it has to do with something what is called the conformal dimension, which is somehow the expected dimension of what you get when you cut down by this, and so if, when you cut down by by the tangent bundle, the dimension is zero, and then you cut down by this, the dimension is minus n. And that somehow is not physical, and so therefore the physicists don't want to touch it. And so there's no uh, prediction. And uh, in particular, as if there's no prediction, there's no proof of the non-existent prediction. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, uh, and so that's our problem. Uh, so problem. So basically, if there was an Nikasov conjecture, one could try to use that in the same way as before, to prove a uh, uh, buffer witten formula. So, so if, so a Nikasov conjecture would hopefully, I mean, with a big effort, so with a very long, uh, uh, lead to a proof of the buffer witten formula. But there is a, not even, so the problem is, uh, we don't even know the statement. So then um, we don't know how to prove it. So instead, uh, you know, it remains a conjecture. We can just check it. So, so instead, for now, until some, somebody tells us uh, what the answer is, um, <clears throat> uh, we just evaluate the combinatorial expression. Yeah. What? No, so, what? no, for the Nekasov conjecture. Oh, I see, I see, okay. And then if you have the Nekasov conjecture, you would have to, 
you, you could do this, you somehow have to do the, you somehow compute this, and then you are supposed to, so you have to first evaluate this, and then you have to take the residue at, at s equal to zero. And uh, if you can do all this, you get, uh, uh, you, you would get the answer. Because you remember that, uh, anyway, so, but, uh, so we just evaluate the combinatorial expression. Because as I said, uh, the, um, we had that this is just by counting over partitions. So let me just say a few, just very few words about it. So we have, uh, so obviously to a partition, we can associate a Young diagram. So, so if nu, say, is equal to n0 until nr, then the corresponding uh, y nu is, um, is a diagram of boxes. I mean, in the positive quadrant, So we're uh, with the columns of length n0 to nr. So whatever, if uh, associated to, we would get, uh, now which one did I want? So we would, for instance, have that this would be uh, so we would have here first three, and then, okay, would be such a thing. And so <clears throat> we can think of this also in terms of, uh, so this, these correspond to mo monomial ideals, and we can very easily see how. Uh, we could say that um, here this, uh, box corresponds to 1, this corresponds to y, this corresponds to y squared, this to y to the 3, and uh, this would be x, x squared, x to the 3. And so we can see that if we have a monomial ideal, so Thus, uh, say if uh, I take the monomial ideal i z nu, which is the ideal uh, y to the n0, x, y to the n1, and so on, corresponding to the partition nu, uh, then we have that uh, that the for instance, the structure sheaf of this thing is just the vector space generated, I mean, has as a basis uh, all the elements x to the i, y to the j, such that i, j is in this diagram. And the ideal sheaf is precisely the set of xi, y to the j in the positive quadrant such that ij is not in the diagram. So we see uh, we can describe everything in terms of this. <coughs> so in particular, the, uh, and so if we have the, we know what the action on the coordinate is, so we know therefore what the action of a basis of this vector space is, because these x i, y to the j are bases. So these are bases. So we know the weights of uh, uh, O z nu, if we know the weights of the coordinates. And uh, 
Then the other sheaves that we consider, we consider both such tautological sheaves twisted by some line bundles, and we, co we consider some sheaves which are of the form x uh, 1 i z i w. And these can also be expressed in terms of this. So there is a formula. So in particular, for instance, if we take this, this will be uh, the tangent bundle. Uh, and so equivalently, you can uh, compute this. And this is, uh, this can be, com there's a formula from this in terms of uh, what uh, Anton said, arms and legs. So if you uh, write um, this thing here, you somehow, if you have a, some box in it, then this would be, say, depending on how you ch define it, See, this length here would be the arm leg length of this, and this would be the leg length. And then there will be, there is some, some formula for this which expresses it equivalently in terms of uh, the sum over all boxes in, in this Z, in, in the Young diagram. Um, so then, somehow, maybe I will not write it precisely, um, to be equal to sum over all S in the Young diagram. So if it's uh, of nu, so if this is C nu, of, um, um, so this, is, this would be a basis of this, so X to the something with the arm length of S and uh, something with the leg length and uh, y, something with the arm length and something with the leg length minus uh, plus uh, some similar expression. But I don't write the, pre I mean, if you want, actually maybe as I wrote it almost, I can also write it. Um, so this would be um, x to the minus leg length of y nu of S, A, Y nu. So maybe I just li write here L of S for the leg length, um, Y to A S plus one plus X to the leg length of S plus one Y minus the arm length of S. And so this means, what this is supposed to mean is that this tent space has, a, has an equivariant basis which consists of uh, uh, as many uh, you know, vectors as there are summons here. And on each summit, and on the summit it acts as, if, uh, as on the monomial x to the this, y to the this. And so this gives us a precise description equivalently of all the uh, vector bundles we consider. And so we, so if one carry this out with a computer, so we can, for instance, compute this uh, what we had here is that S A1, A2, S Q uh, modulo Q to the 31. And so this allows us uh, so we, this gives us a check of the buffer witten formula. for many surfaces uh, up to expected dimension, depending on the surface, maybe between 30 and 50. So it's a rather well-tested 
Um, and similarly, I mean, the same kind of computation you can do for the chi y genus, and you get this. So um, let me just, uh, so as I said, uh, generalizations would be the chi y genus, the elliptic genus. The, I mean, uh, the cobordism class, uh, and then we, I can maybe briefly talk about the case of modelized spaces of rank two, uh, so uh, the rank three case. So maybe I can briefly talk about this as I still have a minute. So let's look at the case of the modelized spaces of rank three sheaves. So, the, so I should maybe say the Mochizuki, there's a version of Mochizuki's formula for arbitrary rank. For any R. So it's just uh, the higher R is, the more complicated the formula becomes, but it's always similar. And so we can also evaluate the rank uh, three case. And I just wanted to show you the answer. So. So we apply this in rank three. So we have again, uh, S is a, PG of S is bigger than zero, P1 of S is equal to zero is our surface. And so we find that the virtual, so the virtual dimension of the modelized space Uh, will be, uh, in this case, 6C2 minus 2C1 squared plus uh, minus 8 times the holomorphic Euler characteristic. And uh, <coughs> let's again assume for simplicity uh, that um, there's a irreducible canonical curve. Otherwise, the result will be in terms of Sarah Quitney invariant. So, we again want some expression in terms of modular forms. There were, uh, in the case of uh, um, of rank two, there was also a theta function in this thing. It was just a standard theta function. We also have theta functions here, but they are slightly more complicated. So we look at theta functions uh, for the A2 lattice. Uh, so maybe just consider two. Call this one theta A0. This is so this, in the moment, I just make it depend on the variable x, which should be q or some rational power of q. In the, if one really wants to view this as modular forms, so this is now over rank two lattice. So we take this uh, pair n m. We multiply it with the matrix with the a two matrix and. Uh, so we use this to make a pairing. 
So if one wants to write this out. Uh, x to the 2 times n squared minus nm plus m squared. So this is one. And the other one we uh, is a similar one where we introduce some kind of sign or rather a root of unity. So we put epsilon equal to e to the 2 pi i divided by 3. Uh, and then this is just the sum over all nm in Z2 uh, of uh, epsilon to the n plus m times the same. So these will somehow be modular forms of weight one for some group. And, uh, <clears throat> and we, however, will mostly want to consider their quotient. So, so these are modular forms of weight one. And uh, we can consider a quotient. So you define a modular function which is z of x, which is just the quotient. So theta a0 of x divided by theta a1 of x. So it's something very explicit, and it's a, uh, you know, as we have a quotient of two modular forms of the same weight, I mean, obviously it's not just this and then. So, and now we are not quite, so we want to express in terms of this, but it's not quite enough. We have to solve some algebraic expansion, so, uh, uh, equation. So we define two other modular functions for some other group, uh, z1 of x and Z2 of x, which is, happens to be uh, Z1 of minus x, as solutions of some quadratic equation, namely uh, W squared minus 4Z of x squared W plus 4Z of x. And then we can finally write down the formula. So we have this function, phi, the generating function for given C1 is uh, 9 times 1 over this 3 eta bar of x squared to the 12 to the chi of 4s, which is somehow responsible for the case of K3 surface times uh, 3 times eta of uh, x to the 6 to the 3 divided by one of these theta functions. And this is to the power ks squared. Yeah, that would be nice, but it's a bit more complicated. So this is multiplied times z1 squared. Uh, so z1 of x to the ks squared plus z2 of x to the ks squared plus minus 1 to the chi of s times just a sign, I mean, which is epsilon to the first churn class times ks plus epsilon to the minus the first churn class times ks. Okay, so this thing will be either one or minus one, uh, either two or minus one. Okay, so this is the formula. So okay, you know, you can see this is a. So, we have this z of x. Now we make a, this quadratic equation, and this has. So z1, z2 are the two values of w that come as solutions of this equation. 
Ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, if, if that's, uh, yeah. I thought that was maybe understood. Uh, okay, so this is the formula. There's also a version, um, there's also a version for the Chi-Y genus, which is very similar, but with a small extra twist. I will maybe not explain it. Um, and, um, <clears throat> okay. Ah, so, so now I haven't, uh, so this was this, I haven't made my statement. I mean, the statement is always, always the same statement as before, but I should at least make it, namely uh, the conjecture is that the virtual order number of uh, this moduli space is equal to the coefficient of x to the power, the virtual dimension of the moduli space of this expression. Okay. So again, this uh, one can do the same argument as before. We apply Mojizuki's formula. We apply the cobordism argument to restrict ourselves to, to the case of toric surfaces, and then one does the computer calculation to check this uh, up to a reasonably high degree, so is enough so that one is convinced that this is actually correct. Okay, and if, yeah, maybe, uh, well, maybe for now that uh, is all I wanted to say. So, okay, thank you.